So because the woke represents a war on truth, uh, we have no other recourse but to wage a war on woke. We fight the woke in the schools. We fight the woke in the legislature. We fight the woke in the corporations. We will never, ever surrender to the woke mob. Florida is where woke goes to die. Yeah, so in case you weren't keeping count, Ron DeSantis said woke seven times in just 22 seconds, which I believe is a new world record. So I guess congratulations, Governor DeSantis. He did it. (laughs) Now, to even call him governor at this point, it kind of feels like a misnomer because he hasn't actually been fulfilling his obligations as governor lately. And it's because he's touring the country, gearing up for a presidential run. But the problem is that while he's shrieking about woke bullshit in South Carolina, he's avoiding actual crises going on in his own state of Florida. And people are starting to take notice of his absence and it's pissing them off, namely donors. As Insider reports, A series of recent political missteps, including continuing his out-of-state publicity tour while massive flooding took place in Fort Lauderdale, appeared to have enraged these donors, Rolling Stone reported. Responding to the Fort Lauderdale incident, the media outlet said that one donor wrote, What the fuck is wrong with Ron DeSantis? Another donor asked, Who in the group could reach DeSantis the quickest to complain about it, Rolling Stone said. And Ron DeSantis pissed off somebody arguably more important than the donors. And the individual who I'm referring to, referring to is, of course, Twitter user CatTurd2, who is notoriously difficult to please, just ask Elon Musk. But the thing about this is, DeSantis once had the coveted support of CatTurd2, but he squandered it. For what? Because as CatTurd2 writes on Twitter, as a Floridian, in four short months, I went from proudly campaigning so hard for and celebrating our governor's 20-point victory to no governor here at all. DeSantis has totally abandoned us to travel around the USA and run for higher office. Over the next year, we'll just be a place he visits every now and then when it doesn't conflict with his national run for president. I dare anyone to explain how I'm wrong. Wow. So imagine having CatTurd's approval and then... You lose it because of your own stupidity. I literally can't. It's a fate worse than death. But honestly here, to be serious, Catherine is not wrong. Perhaps for the first time in his miserable life, Catherine is actually correct about something. And while DeSantis isn't even in his state, he's still insisting that Florida Republicans focus on his pet issues, primarily ones that make him more popular. And that is really starting to piss them off. As Politico explains, Republican lawmakers are stalling a handful of his key remaining legislative priorities with just weeks left in the annual session. And what started out as whispers in private about unhappiness over the governor are starting to become louder, even though Republican lawmakers remain unwilling to speak out publicly against DeSantis because of his power and clout. One House Republican recently told a former legislator he was ready to resign out of frustration over how the session was going. Part of the angst has been sparked by a grinding session where legislators have pushed through bill after bill and chewed up hours of contentious debate that's considered integral to DeSantis is expected presidential campaign. DeSantis's announcement this week that he wanted legislators to take aim again at Disney has irritated conservative Republicans loath to target private businesses. One GOP legislator privately said, we're not the party of cancel culture. We can't keep doing this tit for tat. The lawmaker was granted anonymity to speak freely about the GOP governor. Quote, people are deeply frustrated, said former state senator Jeff Brandes, a St. Petersburg Republican who has been talking to his former GOP colleague frequently this session. They are not spending any time on the right problems. Most legislators believe that the balance of power has shifted too far and the legislature needs to reestablish itself as a co-equal branch of government. So let me get this straight. They're frustrated that an authoritarian has accumulated too much power and influence after they gave this authoritarian demagogue the power and influence that he now has. I mean, Yeah, that's kind of how these things work. I never thought leopards would eat my face, says person who voted for the leopards eating people's faces party. I mean, that's exactly the situation here. Now, there's a plethora of other issues that are beginning to really add up and bring down DeSantis overall. Donors weren't just talking about his absence, the ones that we referenced earlier. They're also frustrated because they refer to him as a damn wimp, according to text messages, and they don't like that he's refusing to respond to Trump's attacks because the attack are landing so you kind of 
have to respond. And they're also mad that he's being too much like Trump. And one of them said that uh, if they wanted to support the MAGA candidate, they would support the MAGA candidate, not the MAGA light candidate. So there's a number of reasons why they're frustrated. And to be clear, it's not just that people are talking shit about him within the Republican Party. He's losing actual political support in a meaningful way. His antics have led to one prominent Republican donor, Thomas Petterfee, pulling support altogether. And additionally, as Politico reports, three Florida Republicans joined four of their colleagues in endorsing Trump this week. Representative Greg Stube announced his backing of the former president on Monday night on Newsmax. Representative John Rutherford tweeted his support Tuesday afternoon. And Representative Brian Mass told CNN he would be with Trump. He later confirmed his support to Politico, adding he might share a committee of veterans backing the ex-president. In yet another slide, Republican from Texas, Representative of Lance Gooden issued a statement Tuesday noting he had a positive meeting with DeSantis but is still backing Trump. Ouch. But as devastating as all of that must be for DeSantis, it probably pales in comparison to this death blow of an ad that we're about to watch put out by a mega pack. Ron DeSantis loves sticking his fingers where they don't belong. And we're not just talking about pudding. DeSantis has his dirty fingers all over senior entitlements like cutting Medicare, slashing Social Security, even raising our retirement age. Tell Ron DeSantis to keep his pudding fingers off our money. Oh, and somebody get this man a spoon. Yeah, that in my opinion, that's it. It's a KO. Clowning on him for eating pudding with his fingers like a savage and also talking about how he wants to cut Social Security and Medicare in the same ad. I mean... That's powerful. There is no way you can effectively counter that. So this doesn't look good, even though it's still too early to declare that his presidential ambitions are over, at least for the 2024 cycle. It does kind of seem like his presidential ambitions are over at this point, right? I mean, he had his moment in the sunlight. There were some talks of him being the heir to Trump's throne, but I mean, that's that's kind of over now. And the best outcome that we can hope for, I think, at this point with regard to the upcoming GOP primary is Trump absolutely buries DeSantis and we never have to hear from this fascist again. And understand, I'm acknowledging that Trump is also a fascist too and he's a legitimate threat to democracy. But I mean, when fascist trash takes out fascist trash, I think that's cause for celebration. So, yeah, we'll leave that there. Ron DeSantis is shitting the bed, and you just love to see it. When you acting like a beta, 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 be